everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this pretty substantial size storage box for your 6x6 paper packs. So you could obviously store anything in this as long as it's uh, no more than 6 inches wide. Um, but I've made this specifically for my 6x6 papers. I was keeping them in A4 trays, which is fine, but I was forgetting and they were kind of getting broken up amongst each other and it, it's been since moving I moved them when they were still in the trays and then some of them had kind of jumbled up and I've sorted them out it's fine but I needed something that was gonna I don't know just be more organized and I've come up with this so if I bring it up you can see it is very strong it's two cases now the reason I've done two is for two reasons um, firstly um, you may want to just have half the size you may not want to have two and I want to be able to um, make a maybe a smaller one and have that to hold um, just other things in but so they all match the other reason I've done it is it just adds that more that bit more um, structure to the boxes so these are made with one mil chipboard which is just that very very strong cardboard that's on the back of your 12 by 12 paper packs or your 8 by 8 ones you'll be able to use 8 by 8 6 by 6 won't work because this is six and a quarter the longest length I believe if I remember rightly um, anyway I'll go through all that but um, that's why and then I've done this base again if you see there and I've finished it with corner protectors I've got this pom-pom trim and then I have made all of these dividers that I've laminated and then with my uh, labeler I have um, I've lost where that one is now where's my go wild I have um, made all the the labels for it so there we are go wild um, and also the reason I've done them with this, the, the stickers over the top is so that once these papers are gone I can just peel that sticker off because it does peel off easily and then just pop something else on there so I don't need to, these are reusable which is great. Um, initially I thought I was only going to make one but now I think I'm going to make two so um, yeah I will be making another one and then I've got that really nice stamp on the front which says there today I will create something beautiful and this looks really nice on my shelf and I'm super pleased with it. So. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so first of all, to make the actual box itself to hold the 6x6 paper, you need two pieces of uh, 5 by 6 and a quarter. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, 6 and a quarter. So two pieces of, this is 1 mil, maybe 2 mil chipboard. Um, that's not the right one I'm using. Let's just double check. Um, yeah, 1 mil. Um, so yeah, two pieces of that and then two pieces of three by uh, five, okay, so that's your sides and then for your base you need a piece of three by six and a quarter, okay. Then the thicker I'm using is this one here and basically when you put this together it's a piece of 12 by 12, okay, so that's what I've cut it from. So from that 12 by 12, if you cut it in half at six inches and then cut along the six in the the 12 inch side of that six by 12 piece at seven and three quarters okay so you'll have these pieces here which will be six yeah six by seven and three quarters that's those two pieces and then these two pieces are what's left over so six by four and a quarter okay once you've got all those, you need to start sticking them down apart from the base. The base we don't do nothing with because it's all going to be attached to that other piece. So it's pointless wasting your paper on it and, and anything like that. So starting with these two, the bigger ones I guess, you can start with the sides if you want. You're basically going to stick it in the middle here. Okay, your overhang will be slightly um, thicker on the shorter side than the, the longer side, that doesn't matter. We can always trim that a little bit later. But that's what you want to do. So I'm using my half inch um, tape here and just going along and just covering the backs. If you've got thicker, then that's fine. But just go over and cover it. If you don't have double sided tape, just use your wet glue. Um, again, just make sure it's paper friendly. You don't want this to get all wet and end up being quite soft. The whole point of using chipboard is to keep our project nice and strong. If you start adding a PVA glue or a heavily water-based glue, all that will do is the chipboard will soak up the water. It will go very soft. 
and it will lose shape and over time it will just not look very nice so just make sure that you select your glue um, where's my bone folder so I've just gone over that and then just go over if you're using double sided tape and just make sure that that is completely stuck down and it's not going to go anywhere so I've got a little bit that overlaps on that one there but that's fine peel off all the backs Okay, once you've removed all your backing there, just flip it over and just stick it down. I'm only, I'm, I'm only eyeballing mine, or I'm eyeballing mine, which is what I was going to say. Just sit it down there. As long as you've got enough to fold over all the sides, and then just go over the back side there, and again, just make sure that that's all stuck down like so. Then you just go over each side and fold it over and just burnish it, okay? And then just get that card used to being in that position, like so. Okay, so that's what you should have. You wanna repeat that with your other large one, okay? So stick that one down in the middle there, and also with your smaller one. So your two sides, just stick them down so they are like so. And do the folding on each side as well, like I just did there. Okay, so with your pieces on your large chipboard, these edges that are slightly larger, you just want to trim them so they're about the same as that, so half an inch. I mean, it's just easy to do this quickly. You don't have to um, be too precise, just so they're kind of the same. Um, it just means you won't have it all hanging over inside. They stick together, which will make sense when we get to that bit. Okay, like so. So now what we're going to do first is get your two um, larger pieces and your base, so the piece that we've done nothing on. And what we're going to do first of all is we're going to stick two of the flaps down like so. So the easiest way to do this is I've been using my red tape, oh it's my pom pom trim, and pop your red tape down so that it is kind of hogging the chipboard, okay, so don't worry about going towards the end of the card, just the chipboard, like so. And then just make sure you got all your air bubbles out of the red tape, like so. Take off your backing, and then I'm also then just gonna use some of my wet glue, which will then stick down that other bit where the tape didn't quite reach, but it also just gives us a little bit of movement. And this glue dries very hard, so it will also give it more strength. And then bring this up onto the side, okay, so it's now bent, and then stick that one down so it's completely flush. So make sure you've got it at a right angle. Make sure your chipboard lines up end to end perfectly with your side bit of chipboard here. I'm just using my bone folder to make sure it's all stuck down. And then when you open it, you get the perfect gap that it needs to come back up. So that now sits perfectly side by side there. Okay, so that's one of our sides. So you can leave that back down again. You can do exactly the same with this side. So again, just running my red tape along, hugging the chipboard, add some wet glue and stick that one down. Okay, so you can see now I've got those two even gaps on both my sides there. Then turn it around, you're gonna do exactly the same with these pieces. So one piece is gonna go underneath, like so. So you're gonna lift it up, stick it, Lift it up and stick it in, so when it comes down again, you'll have that kind of gap. So do that with two side pieces. Okay, so this is now what you should have. Then what we're going to do is stick down these pieces and these pieces on your larger ones and those and the top one there. All right, so exactly the same way, red tape and glue, you're going to stick them all in. Okay, so I've done those two sides. And one thing, make sure you use your bone folder and really work those edges to cook to create that really nice corner that I've I've done. It's all about making sure this is all really um, stuck down. I've been squeezing any glue that I've been getting out there. Make sure your corners are all really nice and it's just completely flush. And you can see there you've got two really tidy sides. Okay, so next what we want to do is add, um, let me get this right because I'm thinking you've got to stick it in that way. So you want to flip it over and you're going to put red tape on the back side of the flaps on your 
um, side pieces here. So these little bits here, you're going to put red tape on. Now, when you add the red tape, you don't want to go completely up to the score line. You want to be about a millimetre away from it. So if I just pop this one down first, just so you can see. Because otherwise, you run the risk of being able to see the sticky tape. So if I pop that bit of red tape on that one, and I fold that round, can you see that I've come away from it by about a millimetre or so? Okay, so that when we bring that, the best way to do is to check, so, you know, I've put my tape down now. When I stick that, you don't want to see the red tape, so I know I'm not going to see any of that stickiness. Okay, so do that on all of the four sides here. Okay, so I've done those ones, then flip it over and just pop some tape on the short ends of your side pieces. Because you're just going to stick these down normally. Okay, so with your little side pieces, get them stuck down first. It's just easier to do it whilst it's all flat. If you don't do it, you just do it when it's together. It's, it doesn't really matter either way, but you might as well do it now. So again, just stick it over. And then, like I said, with your bone folder, just make sure you really work in that card like so. And just do the same on the other end. Okay, so flip it back over again. So you've got this side and we'll start with one of them here. So take your backing off and then again I'm going to add some of my wet glue because this dries clear so it doesn't matter if it splodges out the sides but it just gives us that wiggle room which is what we need. And then just bring this one down and bring up your corner just like you would if you're making any other box that should come up completely flush there with the top. So sit it down so the base is on the bottom so you've got something to lean against and just bring up your corners and get that all stuck down and then pop it on its side and use your bone folder and just go in there and just really work that in so it's nice and secure okay and then just check the outside I've got no glue there but you can see now how we get that really nice corner it just looks really professional just like ones I've seen in paper chase and stationery shops and that's the look I wanted to get so then do this side so you're, you're working on the same sides there so again just taking off my backing and add my glue so just carry on and do those when you do this side take both bits of plastic off at the same time I put my wet glue on the on at the same time and then just bring it down and because we've got that wet glue you've got time to kind of just make sure they're both in place pinch the top so they're stuck and then flip it over and then you can just go in there with your bone folder and flatten it all down okay so there is one very strong box so um, if you want, you can line the insides, but you really don't need to. So now if I bring in some of my 6x6, uh, six six, as soon as you put this in, you don't see anything. So I've got a lot. I've got to sort them all out, make all the dividers, but it just looks so much neater. So you now need to decide how many you need. So I'm using, obviously, the two, and I'm going to give the rest of my six by six that I don't need to my mum but now we're going to make our base um, for the two for two sizes and make all our dividers okay so for my base I've got the same chipboard again and this piece here measures seven and a half by seven and a half and then I've got a piece of matching paper here for some reason I did it in nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and I wanted nine and a half by nine and a half but it really isn't going to make that much of a difference it's still going to give us a nice overhang so this is for two boxes that's what I need it for obviously if you want one box then you'll just grab your box pop it on your chipboard and I'm just giving myself a half an inch overhang I'll bring this up just so you can see like there that would be and then you would cut this so I'd say for one box let me tell you actually you would need a base that will be so what's our so that's three so it'd be four four by uh, what are my measurements here so hold on I'm working the other way so it'd be four by and that's six and a quarter so four by <laughs> seven and a quarter yeah, four by seven and a quarter, okay, for just the one box. But because we're doing two, that's what you need. And then that bit of paper. So this is exactly the same way. So you're just going to cover this with your tape, 
and wet glue and then we're going to stick it down. Okay, so I've just stuck that down on the back and then you want to do exactly the same as what you did to make the box. So just go around on each side and just really burnish it. Throw my uh, bone folder there across the uh, table. And that one there. Okay, and then to do the corners, instead of cutting them, what we're going to do is get a bit of wet glue. And you would have formed a square shape from when you folded it that way and that way. Pop your glue in the square and then come over a little bit like so. Okay. And then what you're going to do is pull up the corner exactly the same way as I do the mini album corners. Bring it up and then that square you want to just line up the lines. Again if I bring it up. So where it's folded you want those score lines to just line up with your chipboard. Okay. And then just use your bone folder again push out any glue, it will just get absorbed by the chipboard anyway and then you just want to work it into the corners like so okay so that's what you want to do and you want to do that on all of those four corners okay so there's my four corners and then all you want to do is add glue and then fold up each side and again really work it with your bone folder make sure the glue spread out um, and get those four sides stuck down okay so those are now all nice and flat now if you want to cut a piece of white card just to cover that you can I'm honestly not going to bother I'm not going to be lifting this up and neither is anybody that comes into my craft room so there is your again really nice base and we just need to do the edges so again it doesn't matter if you don't have these it's still going to look nice but this does just prolong its life and help it obviously last longer so pop your corners on all of my uh, links to what I've got will be in my blog really butt it up to the corner pop some tissue over it and I prefer the hammer the pliers they leave marks and they're really really hard to use sometimes um, whereas the hammer it's just done quick and easy and you get a really nice finish so just do that on the four corners okay so that is now our base all done so next what you want to do is we need to stick our boxes together side by side so you want to stick them like so so I just use your wet glue for this and just stick them together just on the middle sides there okay so I've stuck them together and now what you want to do is stick the base so you're going to now put tape and um, wet glue all on this so we can then put the whole thing down on there okay okay so just spend some time making sure just pop mine down now just and just hold it in place there until it's uh, you're happy that it's stuck down just grab a ruler or something um, your bone folder you can just get in there as well and just make sure you're pushing all the glue down on the base there I've just put a load of my 6x6 in there and I'm just going to leave that now because the weight of those 6x6 papers will keep the bottom of my base nice and flat so that glue really really dries and then when we come back I will be doing the dividers and decorating it. Okay so I've been busy, I have gone ahead and I've decorated all around the edge there, I've put this pom-pom trim and I've got a sentiment, a sentiment's not a sentiment, I've got a stamp, this one here. Today I will create something beautiful and I plan on having it on the front there, okay? So you'll see that in the photos when that's done. But what I've been um, doing is making all my dividers. So for example here I've got old stamping up, I've got my labeler so I'll show you that in a minute as well. Um, first edition botanical beauty, so that's there. First edition storyteller, first edition floral fusion, first edition paradise crash, and so on and so forth. Um, I am sorting them out, and I've got a feeling I think I'm going to make another, another two of these and do and have two sets together because it, I love it. <laughs> and I know I said I'm going to be getting rid of six by six, but now I don't know so much. Anyway, so that's that one ready. Now, what you need to make your dividers is uh, as many pieces basically um, that are six inches by basically you're gonna it's gonna be six and one eighth of an inch because I wanted them to come up just slightly above my actual cardstock 
which is six inches so the white comes up just above it and then I've got these little divider dies so you get all different ones I'll share the links in my blog and basically this one doesn't stretch across the whole six inches so I'm having to let me just bring in my base plate so I can lay it on here first sit it on your base plate and then lie it down so it is in line I've just done two pencil marks which are at six and one eighth of an inch from the bottom so up to this point here it's six and one eighth of an inch then I'm just lying that across there and then sandwich it and die cut it okay so then it's cut it out and obviously it's like that so all then you need to do is just very neatly just trim into the ends there now it doesn't matter if you don't have this die what you can do is just cut straight at six and one eighth of an inch and then just die cut a rectangle piece of card and just sit it slightly over um, stick it down and then we're going to run it through the laminator so you can still make this you can still make it look you don't need to have the bits that I've got and it will still look nice and then I've got one of my laminating pouches Again, I would usually cut that off, but I'm not going to for the video quickly. I've got my laminator here all ready. Just pop it there and just run that one through. Okay, so that has nicely covered. And then what I'm going to do is oh, get that cut out. So just with your scissors, you just want to go around Okay, so that's that cut out and then um, you want to label it now the reason I've done not done the labeling first is because I want to be able to use these again and again so once I've used that paper pack I can just peel this sticker off so this one here is for this this is all my origami paper um, which again I kind of forget I have which is why I'm glad I've done this now because I've got some really gorgeous um, origami paper here to do some lovely um, projects with so yeah that's just reminding me so I have the brother P touch uh, what one's this one P touch D210 um, now I had to label my labeler because I bought mine in China so mine was all in Chinese and it is in Chinese but I just went onto the brother website and just copied the English so it all works perfectly fine so I've already got in the one I've done last so this is just going to be random origami paper random uh, origami, oh, origami paper. Okay, print and then print again. It comes through the back, and you've got a little thing there with the scissors on it, and you just cut that like so, and there's your sticker. So you have to trim it back a bit. There is a way to make it so that you don't have that kind of waste. Um, but I haven't got around to learning how to do it so it probably take me a lot longer because it's all in Chinese so I'll just uh, carry on like this you just peel it off and then line it down line it down lie it down on here make sure I get it nice and even there we go so I've got one now with that and then this one's gonna go so that's all my old stamping up at the back that's stamping up that's st I'm gonna put it right at the back so I can see it so origami there you go that is nicely full I could probably fit another thin pack in there but I adore it like really really adore it you know when you just love something that you've made I love this so um, so yeah I'm gonna do my little um, thing on the front I might decorate it a bit more I think just the pom-poms are enough actually so I love that you can just flick through it see what you've got it's gonna sit great on my shelves and yeah it's it's not hard it's just long-winded again takes time it's a nice nice day project um, you know put movies on and stuff like that which is what I've been doing but I'm yeah really really pleased with it so I hope you've enjoyed um, this storage solution from me today and um, please give me a thumbs up as always if you did and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye